Hey everybody, welcome to Whip Finish Wednesday. We're excited tonight. We've got a great show coming up. But first, I want to talk to you guys for a few minutes about last week's contest. We asked you all to try and guess our mystery fly, and we put some clues up for you all, and we wanted you to wait until after the show and put in the show's comments what you thought the mystery fly was. So our big winner for this week goes to Jimmy Roop. Congratulations, Jimmy, for guessing the fly. It was the Peanut Envy by Kelly Gallup. And you're going to be the big winner this week of three beautifully tied Peanut Envy flies. So we've got the chartreuse white. We've got a white one and a black. Hey, JC, how's it going? What's up? So Jimmy Roop, that's awesome. Um, again, thanks to everybody who commented after the show last week. Um, and this week, we're, we're going to be doing the same thing. We're going to have another contest where we're going to give you some clues. And I'll say these clues again throughout the show. And if you'll wait till after the show is over, and then in the comments, put the guess of your fly that you think that these clues are for. And if you are chosen as a winner for this week's contest, you're going to get some really cool things too. I'm going to let John show you those things in a few minutes, but I'll go ahead and start by showing you the three clues for the mystery fly for this week. We've got Whiting Farms, Dry Fly Hackle, bum, bum, bum. and a lovely light ginger. And we also have some Simperfly K-pop dubbing in Sulfuria. Boom, boom, boom. And finally, we have some Daiichi hooks, and um, they're in varying sizes here, but um, it's Daiichi hook 1167. That's all I'm going to tell you. So let's get to it. <laughs> all right. Well, Katie, thank you so much. Let me see those, uh, those peanut envies that we whipped up here because this is going to be kind of fun. And what's up, John Christopher, Freddie, Randy, Mr. Brasiers, Gary Barnes. Oh, John Christopher. Glad you guys are watching. So um, the peanut envy is a fun little fly that, that Katie and I have got a new endeavor to, to work on. Uh, here's the chartreuse. Jimmy's also going to get this black one here. Um, and, uh, and we got a nice white one. Good, <clears throat> good little uh, mix of flies. And um, what's up, Ed? We've got. Um, well, let me pull this one out here. We got a new toy. We, I don't know, about two years ago, a year ago, I bought this Loop uh, Opti Runner from um, uh, from Mr. Barnes himself. And uh, this is like my favorite reel. Uh, and we got it for saltwater for our seven weight. And we're going to start fishing uh, for smallmouth here in on the South Holston in Kingsport. And I wanted to get a six weight. So for the larger rods, we went with another loop opti runner. So over the next few weeks, you'll see the process of us. Uh, what's up, Graham? What the fly is, it's an awesome one. What, all right, Nathaniel, don't give it up. Um, so we're going to load this. Katie's going to take this to Sevierville this weekend and put some backing on it. By next Wednesday, we'll probably have some fly line, and we'll uh, we'll tie on the uh, the leader, and we'll kind of go through the process of how we're going to um, hook this up uh, as we uh, as we outfit the fly or as we outfit the the rod. Um, but before we go fishing, we need some flies, so I want to tie up some more peanut envies. And good night, John Christopher. Thank you for hopping on. Um, good night, John Christopher. Thanks for watching. And. Uh, <laughs> So anyway, I'm kind of jealous that these are going to go out, but Jimmy, just send us your address and we'll get these in the mail to you. Um, but that brings us to tonight. Love you too, buddy. Um, that brings us to tonight and what we're going to tie. We're going to keep on with our norm and um, we're going to tie some Utah killer bugs. Now the Utah killer bug is uh, the way we're tying it and the way we're fishing it. Is that a is a scud imitation? Um, this can also uh, be be fished as a crane fly larva, uh, but we're tying this as a scud. So on a on a scud hook, the winner, uh, if you guess 
the fly that we're going to tie next week from the materials that we'll show you throughout the week or throughout the show. If you didn't see them, let me know. I'll show them again. You'll get this fly box from Umqua, um, this uh, Umqua LT standard. And uh, and we're also going to put uh, a bunch of, does it use yellow marabou? No, it does not use yellow. I guess it could, but it does not. You're not supposed to. You're not supposed to give clues during the show other than the ones that I'm giving. Okay. Um, but you'll get about, I don't know, half a dozen to a dozen of these uh, Utah killer bugs. So the reason we're tying this up, we I tied these a long time ago, and I hardly don't ever fish them. Uh, but I was talking to our good friend, Patrick Folkrod, who is the owner and head guide over at South Olson River Company. Uh, phenomenal angler, phenomenal guy. Um, really good for a local friend. And if you're ever in coming up to East Tennessee and you want to fish the local tailwaters, I would highly su suggest reaching out to Patrick. He uh, has, has got a whole crew behind him. Just a phenomenal guy. Um, but he was suggesting that we might think about tossing uh, this fly and we fish it this weekend. I think we've got some footage from fishing it this weekend. Um, but we fished it this weekend and we did pretty well. We uh, we caught fish on we, that fly. We do have some awesome footage. I haven't got around to it yet. I've been busy. Yeah. So we'll get started. The um, we're going to use the twenty four eighty seven, the the TMCO twenty four eighty seven right here, and uh, I'm also going to use the twenty four fifty seven because if you can see, I don't have a size fourteen. The twenty four eighty seven. Maybe we, I know Umqua uh, is, is I'm struggling here. You have no hooks. Um, none. So normally I would tie them both on the 2487, but since I don't have a size 14, we'll go with the 2457. So that'll be our hardware. We're gonna put some 015 lead wire on the uh, on the fly, and the two main body materials. So those were two different different types. We're going to use the Semperfly. Let's see if you can see it there. Yeah, Semperfly Chadwick's 477 substitute. Uh, it's a great, great material. But also, I like this pure shrimp shrimp wool. This gives a different uh, different look to it. So this is a this is a good one as well. Another popular substitute for uh, the Chadwick's 477 is the Jameson Shelton Shel Shetland uh, Spindrift yarn, I believe. That's a tongue twister. That is a tongue twister. But if you don't have any of that, um, you get creative and you can use uh, like sow scud dub, put it in a dubbing loop. And we have, uh, if we have some time, we'll, we'll do one of those as well. So let us know if you have any questions or if there's anything you want to see, but we'll go ahead and get started on this. So we'll start with a bigger one just for the fun of it. We'll go with the TMCO 2457, size 14. Just need one. We'll stick her in our vice here. And I might need to go live on Instagram too. There we go. So we've got the um we got the 2457 in our vice. I'm gonna put on the 14, I put 10 wraps of uh of lead on there. So <clears throat> I'm just gonna hold hold the tag in. I'm wrapping lead. This would be kind of fun to go over this a little bit, a little bit more, especially since you know, I can actually see it on the on YouTube. So when I wrap lead, I'm just grabbing the tag in here just enough to uh what's up cmdw uh sorry we uh i forgot to go live we're we're, we're on instagram for everyone or one instagram we're on youtube for everyone hopping on, on instagram if you can hop over and check us out there um so let's go ahead and zoom in here so you can hopefully see oh maybe get a little something to prop this back one up there you go now you can now instagram can see okay so um when we're lapping please do one and dubbing loop i don't have all the fancy stuff no problem randy i will definitely do that and they uh do it in a dubbing loop thank you for the suggestion um so just grab enough of this tag in here so you can you can hold it you'll be able to break it off and i'm, I'm talking about with my with my left hand Grab it like so, and now we're going to wrap it back towards me. And I'm I'm having my wrap hit the previous wrap. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
Now, if you let the, the lead wire slide through your fingers, um, if something break off, and it's kind of like a, you'll break it off every now and then. And when you're first getting started, you'll, um, uh, you'll just kind of learn how much pressure you need. But now if I'll grab the, the end that the, the spool is in and I helicopter that off and pull it down, as you can see, there's no, no waste on this end because that's ready to go. And my only waste is this one little piece of tag end right here. So to get that off, I just put my finger like, like this, right to where I'm holding the, um, the, the lead wraps. And I grab that tag in and I just helicopter it off as well. Just like that. And now my, um, <clears throat> my lead's ready to go. If you want to, you can use your fingernails. I just see a lot of, to squish them together. I see a lot of people that will really booger that up and they're having to get their scissors to, to bring us down and to change it around. It's just, it can be a little difficult. So, um, so anyway, and Nathaniel, thank you. What's up, Jeff Rowley and Truman. Howdy doody dandy fellas. Good to see you on. And while Katie, Katie's making a little adjustment here, I'll go over the, um, uh, materials. So this is, this idea came from Truman. Um, as Katie went over earlier, if you'll comment on the show, after we post it, so comment in the comments the fly that you think that we're going to tie next week. And here is a brief material list. Um, let me a pack of those hooks. Okay, brief materials list here. So we've got some hooks. This is the Daiichi. Maybe it'll. There we go. No. Daiichi 1167. Um, we'll, I'll do it a little bit better in a minute. Some uh, separate fly kapok and the sulfur color, and some dry fly dubbing. Or that's, that's a funny package of dry fly dubbing. Some uh, dry fly hackle. Lynn's Crafters <laughs> is having a sale right now. Yeah, yeah. So the uh, if you'll switch over to the to one of the other cameras here, let's see if this will. There we go. So here is the here are the hooks. It's eleven sixty seven, and here's your big. The description of the hook. So somewhere in there might be a giveaway. We're making this one kind of easy, but it is not a um, first come first serve. So if someone guesses, that's okay. I uh, guess there can be twenty guesses and at the end of the um, next Wednesday night. If there's twenty people that guess right, we'll draw a winner. They'll receive this fly box um, full of uh, not full. With the um, completely full, completely full of with, flies that John tied between now and then. That's right. So, as Gary Barnes is so nice to point out, don't uh, if you guess now, that's totally fine. If you uh, guess later on, that'd be better uh, because because it doesn't count if you guess right now after the show is over. Gary gets so impatient. All right, so we'll go back to the fly here. What's up, Michael? Michael, you ought to hop over on Michael's Get Real Fly Tying on uh, Instagram. Hop over on um, uh, YouTube. You'll see quite a bit better. What's up, Ryan? You ought to hop over on YouTube, too. Um, okay, so we've got our our, uh, our lead on the hook. We're ready to get going. Uh, we're using tan, 12-aught um, classic wax thread. And I'll just start right behind the – I'm going to leave a little bit, little bit of space – but right there behind the eye of the hook. I'm just going to build up just a little bit. And all I'm going to do with, with virtually no pressure is hop this thread over my lead and bring it down tight behind here. I've still got that tag in right here, and I can just break it off. And now I'm going to put a whole bunch of thread wraps, not around the hook point. Um, thank you, Katie, for adding that comment. Gary is not a rule follower, is he? He's, he's just really like a vandal. <laughs> well, he's a noob. He kind of kind of watch. He just him. started tying. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as as we're wrapping through this lead right here, right behind the lead, I'm making you know not super tight, but tight tight wraps. My initial wraps through the lead, like here, there's really not much pressure at all because if I really if I pull down tight on this the thread is going to go down in between those thread wraps. And that's not really what I want. So right now I'm just trying to build up a nice smooth underbody for this. Now that we've got uh, some thread on there, then we can go ahead and 
start uh, tightening it up. So I want a nice smooth underbody because this is what's going to allow my wraps uh, of the material to, um, to be smooth. So there we go. <clears throat> Pretty good. I say right here, I need to work on that transition here just a little bit, but that is relatively okay. And there's people make the rules, <laughs> but at least you own it there, Gary. All right. So we'll switch over to the, uh, to this one here. Um, so now I've got my, I'm going to start off with the, the person being the Chadwick's 472 sub, 477 sub from Semperfly. Now I'm, this might be a little bit much, but once again, I like having a ruler uh, on my desk like this. So I'm going to do four and a half inches. That is a little bit much, but um, you know, if I'm guessing every time, sometimes I won't have enough. Other times I've got way too much and I end up wasting a lot of materials. You had so, to teach me how to use a ruler this past week on the we winter fishing. What? what? Oh, it. gosh. Kate, Katie said, uh, um, I was tying a dropper on. I just wanted a short one. So I said, give me about 18, 18 inches of nylon, 5X nylon. Or it might have been 6X nylon. I can't remember. But I did not want floor car. I wanted 18 inches. And she gave me a piece like lo <laughs> longer than this. I mean, seriously, it was longer than this. And I was like, honey, what? I mean, you see 18 inches. She said, I know what that's 12 inches. And I'm like, okay, well, if that's 12 inches, <laughs> why the hell do I need this much for 18 inches? Like, I just need that and half. Like, I need like this much. That's it. It's a short cropper. And then I think she it, started doing the it math. It said and, that you would have, have um, extra for when like, well, you tie the I'm knots. I'm really so. bad at knots. So. <laughs> okay. So we'll go back to this one. So now I'm going to kind of flick this out a little bit. This material has three cores in it. Um, so you can see there's three pieces here. I'll just trust me, there's three. So I'm just going to take it. And when you've got shorter pieces, they'll come apart real easy, just like that. And um, now I'm going to go back to my hook. And I just lay this right on top. So you can see the, the cut in right there. I'm going to grab it with a pinch wrap, like so. So we've got that. Kind of locked, not locked in, but it's just captured on top. And I'm going to use my fingers to hold the material and just do a couple little wraps here. So now it's just bound down on top of the hook shank. And now we'll bring it back. Maybe. There we go. I'll bring this all the way back. And now one thing you want to make sure that you're careful with. I might do one more wrap down and that's it. Don't go so far down that you um, that you're going to hurt the the hook ability here. You don't want to get down into this hook bend too much. Uh, a lot of times I see people when they're they're tying scuds, eighteen inch big old browns. She shouldn't know right. That's that's true. That is true. Um, she usually catches a bit bigger ones than I do. Um. But if you tie this all the way down, then it just it won't work as well. Just trust me on that. All right, so I'm just going to make sure this is nice and smooth. If your thread slips as you're going down this, then your your um, yarn is going to slip as well. And that looks pretty darn good. And I'm go doing this a little bit more than I need to, but I'm just looking for gaps and everything. Okay, so the way the... Um, Instagram stopped working, so back over here. Huh. Well, I might, Glenn, I might not have been, uh, I might not have been talking, but it looks like it's working over here. There's 12 people watching on Instagram, but I'm, I'm believe it or not, I haven't looked down on Instagram in quite a while. A non tying clue. Elvis's jailhouse rock can be a reference to the fly. In a sling. But, yeah, that's true. True. Very, very true. Um, okay. So we've got this in. If you notice, I did not put a half hitch in. That's because the thread's hooked around the eye of the hook. So the reason you put a half hitch in at this point is so the thread doesn't turn. So as you can see, my my thread's just my thread's not unraveling. It's not ra raveling. It's fine just like that. So I'm going to take my thread, and if we'll go to this one here, honey, I'll take my thread and um, I'm going to hold it down. We'll spin it. Let's spin get this out of the way so you can see. Oh boy, maybe. A little better background color. 
Look at that. Okay, so um, I've got my material, the yarn here. I'm just going to spin it up. Now I've tried using, um, I, I've used a dubbing twister to do this, but it really, if you have a, a rotary vise, it's a lot easier to not use a dubbing twister because this, it's a lot easier to over twist it and to break the thread. But you see on, on Instagram, you can really see it. And on YouTube, you'll switch over to the close camera, honey. Yeah, and uh, we had a question about what thread, I guess he means a thread and not the, uh, the super floss stuff. But what, is it classic wax thread? Yep, this is a super fly classic wax 12 watt thread. And the, um, the material that I'm twisting right now is the Chadwick's, there you go, uh, 477 sub. So that right there. So it's split into thirds. And now I'm just going to use my rotary vise and bring it around. I want to make sure I do touching wraps. That's, I mean, kind of important. I don't think once you brush it out and everything, it's going to make a whole bunch of difference. But I'm just doing touching wraps. And that um, with my lead and the way I did my underbody, now if you start running out, you can pull back here and twist it up some more. It's not a big deal. With my um, the lead and the way I built the underbody, that's what um, allowed me to bring it back again. This allows me not to have to worry about building a tape or anything. The taper's already built. So there we go. Just yeah, and so like if that. you don't have the that particular material, what else could you do? Um <clears throat> You can use uh, Sal Scud Dub. There's a, there's a lot of dubbing that you can use. Um, and we'll show you that here in just a minute or two. There we go. So we're going to put a couple wraps behind, a couple wraps in front. And this would be a good time to go ahead and move the hook so it's going more of an up angle. That way your thread doesn't fall off the hook eye. Cut that off. You can see the waste we've got here is um, not much at all. About exactly one inch and really any less have been hard to hold on to so i'm just going to kind of halfway bind that down and then i'm going to look for my whip finisher and if i can't find it, i'm going to say katie where's my and she'll say have you looked for it what but what did i tell you this week i don't know i didn't lose anything this week well i said you know what let's just skip the part where you say where is something and then you go look for it and let's just go straight to you don't even look for it at all and i'll just go find it yeah it's a lot easier that way nice fix on the touching wraps that's why you're the bit oh i don't know about that um did you see the when i had that little open spot there is that what you're saying well i mean if you're going to tie something tight right spend the i mean if you're production tire you're just tying like I don't know. I guess you can rush through them because fish aren't going to care if there's a little gap here or there. But, um, you know, this is a, I have a passion for us. I'm, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it right. Gary gave some good suggestions on substitutes for that. Okay. Slim down poly yarn, Zelon, dry fly poly yarn, lots of materials. You need to be fibers, predator fibers. There you go. And Keisha is laughing at us. Actually, I think she's laughing with you, honey. She's probably like, I know exactly what you're talking about. Feel the look for it's it. It's just first. easier. Just, I'm, I just quit this week. I'm like, we're just skipping that part. Like, it's just so much easier just to skip it. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll just find it. That way, uh, I don't get mad. You don't get frustrated. We don't waste any time. That's right. All right. So you can see we've got our, um, got our head here. And that's it. I'm going to put a little head cement on here, or a little Sally Hansen's, just a wee bit. We'll stick it right here. And we'll try not to let it drip. If it starts dripping, I'll put it in the container. There we go. And I'm going to grab my special color wire here, because I always lose my scrap wire. And we've got that done here so this is our our complete with all the other big tires that fell off and their q a is tired but y'all keep going well thank you michael i'm i'm trying to eat oh, here, let it <laughs> she flexes on me that's that's true 
Um, well, I've been trying to eat a cheeseburger. There, you, thank you, Katie. Um, sorry. So let's go and fly through another one so we don't uh, go an hour and 20 minutes on a five minute bug. So I was going to do one with this uh, uh, perfect wool, this front perfect wool here, but um, there we go. This makes a really cool color. I, I like this one, but we'll go and switch over to the, uh, the poly yarn and not the poly yarn, sorry. The, um, oh, South Scud Dub. So we'll put this and we'll do a size 16. Like I said, I used the 24, 8, 24 57 on the first, on the first uh, bug that I did in a size 14, sorry, in a size 14. And I'm using the 2487 in a size 16 on this one. Now, normally I would have done a size 14 in the 2487, but I don't have that size of hook because I, I just don't have much stuff. What can I say? Keisha, I hope you saw you the. Um, no. Nothing. I hope you saw all of Katie's uh, comment there. So I won't do seven or eight wraps this time. So same thing. Hold my tag in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hold up to eight. Helicopter this off. It pops off like so. And for those of you all that are Instagram while I'm pulling this off, it's like I probably should have done one more wrap. Um, if you can log in on YouTube, you will see different angles and it looks a little bit better. And I'm actually watching the comments on YouTube pretty much regularly, but, um, a little bit better than I am on Instagram. So, um, all right. So we're going to start a thread right behind the hook eye, leaving a little bit of space, do a small, slight ramp, not much. And then we're going to hold our tag and, and with virtually no pressure, and bring our thread up and over that lead, not through the lead. Once we get a wrap or two right behind the lead, then we can tighten back up, bring it down like so, and pop that off. And now we're going to do the same thing we did before, build a little ramp. So this time we're going to use South Scud Dub. So this is really if you're going to use the dubbing. And we're going to... Pull this over. Let's go back to the main camera here since we probably have a few different people that are on. Oh, you got to thank you, Katie. All right. So um, while I've got my thread uncording for next week, if you'll comment in the YouTube video, the YouTube description um, after we posted the uh, the fly or sorry, after we posted the video, um, comment what your guess is on next week's fly. Now, Truman came up with this idea. I'm going to jump on Instagram a badge. And, well, thank you, Glenn. I, I apologize. I, I can't apologize more for not paying attention on Instagram. But uh, as you can imagine, the um, a t TV here, cell phone here, a camera here, a camera here, a camera here, and a camera there, and a microphone here. It's a little distracting. So, But thank you so much. You're awesome. Um, so the... The clue giveaway. materials for the contest. The clue are, materials. So the cool thing about this is, is Truman wanted us to be able to share the materials for next week. So this is what we're going to use on that next week's fly. Might not be the exact same things, but you can start looking for substitution. Uh, dry fly hackle. And we'll use a ginger type color. We use dry fly dubbing. So we're kind of got a little theme here. And this is separate fly kapok and sulfur. I mean, you, we haven't tied a sulfur in so long. We don't we don't fish them hardly at all, you know. And hooks. So probably tie a size 16. This is size 18. But this is a, we'll switch over to this one, see if this will work. Um, there we go. The 1167 Daiichi hook. So here's the here's the um the hook we're gonna use. Probably use a little sparkle or merger yarn as well. Uh, and that's, oh, in um, poly yarn, that's yeah, sitting up top. Poly, poly yarn will be our next, our one more material. Poly yarn. You, see, you added that one. I did. I added it. You're like the nice parent who gives too many presents at Christmas. Oh, honey, I try. I try. What's up, Bobby Daddy? Good to see you. Order some Kona big game hooks. 
is salmon time here. Cool. It took me five minutes to spell Daiichi. It is. And by the way, did you know that Kapok is a kind of tree found in the jungle? Mm -hmm. And it makes a great fire starter, too. There you go. Um, okay, so I'm going to get my diving back out. I like the rainbow sow scud dive. I think it looks very similar to this shrimp, um, pervy shrimp wool. So I'm going to continue making my um, smooth body on this scud. Now, if you notice, like... If you Freddy, see, don't do that. He says he can heart. burn his flies in an emergency. Yeah. Oh, boy. So if you notice right here, uh, Instagram, you can see it right there. And can we go back to the close-up? There we go. See that little piece of lead right there? It's kind of... that. That's no big deal, but that will annoy the heck out of me. If you'll get your fingernail and just kind of pop it out, it'll usually just break right off. Okay. Yeah. And see how that's see how it's going now. Oh, that's exactly that. that's exactly what we want. Just kind of smooth the edge of it though, so it doesn't catch on your thread. Mm-hmm. Okay. Burn the whole box. Freddie, you can burn the whole box because John can send you another box completely full of flies that he's going to tie between now and next week. Completely full. And just as a disclaimer, the box is not going to be full. It might, it might have a dozen of these flies in it. All right. So now you can switch to this one. Please, ma'am. Okay. Perfect. So I've got my thread. Let me do that again so you can see it. To always try to smooth the lead. It's a, it is a, it's just, I don't know. It's a problem having bumpy lead that we can't let it go. Um, so I'm going to put a dubbing loop in. So all I'm going to do is take my thread, pull it out, and this doesn't need to be long. Probably the whole thing might be six inches or so. At the six inch mark, I just put my finger here and I bring it back over. Okay. And now I bring it around and I flop it around my thread twice. And that just closes the loop. And now I'm going to bring it back up or back down to the starting point roughly. And now I'll bring this back around. Just let that hang there. So now I'll pull out my south scud diving. And I don't need a whole lot. Maybe a little more than that. And, and if you want, use whatever color you want. There's no, there's no rules. There's just like inconsiderate people that tell us we do it, do it wrong. Um, you don't have to worry about following any rules. Just whatever you think, whatever color you want to try to fish, knock yourself out. So I've got my, um, my little bit of dubbing here, what I'm doing is I'm carding it. So I'm just pulling it straight out and then putting it back together. So that all that's doing is kind of aligning the fibers. Now I'll just take that and stick it in my dubbing loop. And before I forget about it, has Nan hopped on here today? Oh, I haven't seen, seen Nan. Nan yet. It's, a, it's one of those, one of those days. Okay. So I'm going to take my dub, my dubbing twister and put it in the, um, in my loop. So you can see right here, that's really short. Um, Bobby, Daddy, you need to come out. Can you hop in on uh, on YouTube? Can you? Can you? What you did you? And now I'm gonna because I, I just kind of put it in there with the, all the fibers aligned. Um, I uh, now I want to just pull it. Now I'm trying to stretch stretch it out. I love it, that color of that salsa, of that oh. rainbow. Yeah, anyone's tied to Rainbow Warrior, you've got plenty of this laying around. Love it. Someone right now is going, oh, yeah, I've got that. Rainbow Warrior, got it. Got it. Oh, it's all still there. You can't miss it. All right, so here's a cool thing about dubbing loops. Don't need this to be super thick. I'm just trying to pull it apart. Don't need to spend a whole lot of time on it either. So now I'm going to grab my, my um, dubbing twister and just tw just cord it up. I'm, as I'm looking down on it, it's going clockwise. And now I just look at it. I'm like, well, you know, I've got a thin spot here. It's a little thicker there. So guess what we can do? We can uncord it like so. Don't have to uncord the whole thing. Now we can just move the, the, the material around until it's more uniform. That makes sense. Now we'll cord it up again. It doesn't have to be perfect, but that was always my, like, beef with, with diving loops. I'm like, man, I want, I want to get a nice, nice uh, taper. I want to look right. Sometimes I just can't get it just perfect. Um, 
So I got a little bit of a bump there. If I wanted to, I could just pull some of it out. Um, I could untwist it. Well, I think that'll be okay for now. So we'll put our, put our thread back over here. I'm going to put a wrap or so. We'll go, yeah. Put a wrap or so forward, and I'm going to bring this back. So the material is going to start where I want it to, which is right there. And now I'm going to bring this up. So, and see, this is really picky. And if you don't like it this picky, you can unpick it. Not a big deal. And now we're going to be right there. See, that went too close. I think that's good. So, my loop is way too long. I want to bring this down one, two, and three. Unhook my Twister, pull tight. We'll put a couple of wraps there. Nan just showed up to the party. Nan, dude, I, Nan, I was using our favorite uh, dubbing spinner, and I was wondering where you were. Bob, I love that dubbing too. So now love I'm going to cut off that. Um, if you notice, I cut this off right at the tip. And um, Bobby, Daddy, if you have you logged on to, if you logged on, Bobby, Daddy, I can't. I don't know. Bob. Well, okay, there's Bob. There, is there just one Bob out there? I don't know. Is I thought Bob was Bobby Daddy. Maybe Bob is Bobby Daddy. Um, okay. So what I did is now I've got my tag right here. So I cut it and I pulled that dubbing out. Got a little bit of dubbing there. Now I've got my tag and I can pull this back and lock everything in tight. Like so. Now I can grab that and cut it off close. So for me, that's, that's just way too bushy. Hey. Bill, we'll see you next week. See you, Bill. See ya. Now we'll trim this up a little bit just because I like to be able to brush it on the water, but not so much beforehand. And I'll, this is, once again, one of those things I could spend way too much time on. I know I'm the only one that spends too much time on her flies. But you kind of get the get the idea here. All right, so now I'm gonna pull this back. Make sure that's good and locked off. We finished it. Now we're gonna put a red head on here, and it's definitely not the same, but uh, it's good enough for government work, as they say. So now I'm going to put my, and we'll clean it up some more once I get the, um, once I get the head done. Work this back. Pop this off. Pull all these materials back. There we go. There we go. Get that nice little red head in there. YouTube and not logged in to comment. Brian, I understand, but I'm glad you can watch it on YouTube. And if you ask something 25 times on Instagram, the 26th time, I will see it. Okay, so we got this, uh, got that done. Before I do it, do any more, um, before I put resin or anything on the head, I want to trim this up a little bit to make it just a touch cleaner. Because as you fish this, it will get plenty chewed up. Curved ones out. And if you wanted to, you could even put a, a wire through this, however you wanted to do it, make it different. So I fished the same one um, all weekend and it still looks great. That it does. It does. I mean, I'll fish it. Sure again. enough. All right. So there's that one. And um, let's zoom back in on the fly itself. Uh, this so we can see what the after is and if we've got time i'll do one with a shrimp find my turquoise wire play fly for you i'll add a half a dozen of them hold on a second fly for you one second i'll read your comment because i do have just because fly for you is hopping on and this is a nice little can we there we go okay this one Nice sticker fly for you. I love the, I love the designs. They're super cool. The mystery fly for the winter for the giveaway. Okay. 
Oh, That's awesome. Nathaniel, thank you. Thank that'll you. Be, that'll be super cool. Um, you can just mail them directly to them or you can send them here. We'll stick them in this box. So, um, so th thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Nate. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye, Nate. Um, all right. So that was our, our technique of using, uh, just dubbing and depending on dubbing, it'll be picky, not so picky. Um, you might have to do a little trimming like that, but this will work just fine. Um, the, um, and then we'll go ahead and start loading up. Yeah. I think we'll be okay to do the one more in the shrimp wool. Um, but while we're doing that, I'll wait till the end. So I'll go over the, the uh, materials again for the mystery fly late right before we log off. But if you'll guess the mystery fly in the comments after we've posted the show on YouTube, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, and you, and you're right. We will draw a winner from all the right answers. So if you see someone that guesses the right thing, guess again. And uh, this past week, Jimmy Roop won uh, this one, uh, this one, and this peanut envy. So I know it's not a big deal, three flies, but they're um, the bigger the fly, you know, the bigger the fly. <laughs> oh gosh, that was so funny. Um, so you got a hook in the vise, hook in the vise, thread. Start her up, start thread, get it right up against there, but not pushing on the, the lead. Hold the thread up, bring it around, loose, 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 and right on the hook shank. Bring it down, bring it back up, pop this off. And now we'll build up a little ramp to right behind the, um, the lead. Good night, Graham Jones. Good night, Graham. Thanks, thanks for, for watching. Yeah, thanks for hopping on. And if any of you all have not subscribed to our channel, we'd really appreciate it. That really helps us out, helps us grow, helps us move. I don't know, it didn't really help us move, but it's cool. We appreciate it. It helps us, you know, move. It helps us. Gives me something. Bed. It helps us get out of bed in the morning. Yeah, when well, I come home from work, I'm like, honey, we got one more subscriber today. I'm so excited. And she's like, good job, honey. I'm like, no, good job, honey. And she's like, no. Nah. Yeah, not really. Um, oh man, we crack ourselves up, don't we? We we have we will have a um a video to upload pretty soon. Yes, we'll have our first, our video. first video. Katie's been pumped about it, and I've been pumped about it. All right, so the shrimp wool is um, it's just two two uh, pieces of material, so I still separate that out. And I forget who said about, you know, me taking my time with the, um, so there you go. So you see the two, um, take my time with the ribbing segmentation on these. Um, the key is your underbody, making sure it is completely flat. If your underbody is not flat, it's going to be really difficult for you to get your, um, uh, thread wraps or your material wraps flat. Now this shrimp, you know, like this shrimp body material a little bit better. It is much more delicate. So you have to be a wee bit more careful with it as far as twisting it around. And see that big ball of um, the material there? I'm not worried about that catching anything. I'm not, this is going to be a fuzzy fly. I'm not trying to clean that up, but I am making the underbody just right. Now we'll bring our bottom cradle over again. Bob, we've missed you on the show too. Twist this up. Doesn't have to be super, super, super tight, but just enough so it kind of goes back on itself. Bring it around. Make sure your wraps are going up the hook shank and not down. They're going down right now. It'll take you a while to get to the hook at the hook eye if you're going the wrong way. There we go. Didn't get the best start to that, but we got it now. See how fuzzy this material is? This is that one that uh, was in the front of the one I posted today. And you see those red fibers in there? 
you can see all those like cool little fibers that this thing has and it's that one looks a lot like the one that i fished this weekend well maybe well, i guarantee this is not the one you fished this weekend no but it looks like it but it's close all right so we've got this here we'll put a couple wraps hold this tight a couple more cut that off put those scissors up because i don't need those bring my thread back just a touch i just need to do a wet finish You don't have to do anything fancy on the wet finish. Because we're going to throw this red on there. I'm going to readjust my hook. Now, if you see right here on the um, on the the hook, see all that bend? Let me put my hand behind it. Maybe see, yeah. So see, there's that much of the bend showing. That's what you want. If I went down much farther, there would be too much uh, too much material. You, not that it wouldn't work totally, but um, you want to leave part of that bend open. So you can see my hook eye is kind of um, covered up there. We're going to use our thread, push that material back, and we're going to work our thread back to cut to catch the material a little more, capture the last little bit of thread, pop that off, and and that material is called. This is called perfect shrimp perfect wool. Shrimp. Here you go. Give that to you. So this is a pretty cool, pretty cool one, and these aren't that expensive. There's not a whole heck of a lot and yeah, maybe not for a few dozen flies but um stuff's not that that bad i think the hard part be finding it but uh, i know a lot of stores online have got them two three four yeah let's go four so there we go so we've got that done i'll throw some sally hanses on here yeah the the color on it's really cool Hopefully it's coming through nice and clear for you guys on YouTube. Get that just right. Take our wire. And when it gets wet, it really does look shrimpy. It's kind of got that translucent a little bit with the pinkish mixed in and it's mm -hmm. really cool. Yep. So this is just this is not how I would normally tie with it, but just for display, there you go. Scuddly, that's right, Jeff. So there, there it is in the vise. Now, if you wanted to, you could um, you can brush these out, but no, that, that's really fine right there to uh, to leave it just the way you've got it. Um, the more the fish eat it, the more the pickier it'll get. And, uh, and that's cool. Buggy is heck. That's right, Adam. Buggy. Shrimp task. H-E double hockey sticks. So, <laughs> yeah. So, um, so for the challenge next week, uh, of course, we'd love to see you guys fly as I uh, see you um, tying these up. But next week's fly, this was uh, Truman Nicholson gave us this idea. So we'll, um, yep, Jameson Shetland Spender of Yarn, Color Oyster, absolutely. Um, the, um, the materials, the materials for the, the clues for next week. Freddie, or Freddie, you got me all, all out of a kilter now. Um, Truman Nicholson suggested that we give out the materials list for what we're going to tie next week. So that's what we're doing right now to give you a hint. So if you can guess in the comments of the YouTube video after we post it, um, then you'll be entered to win Umka fly box with the flies we just tied plus the flies we posted earlier this week. Um, so about half a dozen to a dozen flies and Fly 4 is going to throw in another half dozen flies. Material uh, number one is dry fly heckle. Number two is uh, dry fly dubbing. We're going to use the semper fly kapok and sulfuria. Some uh, poly yarn. And we'll, prob we'll probably use a little biot action too and a little um, sulfur or not sulfur, sparkle emerging yarn. And the final material is going to be the hooks. You just gave it all away. Well, you couldn't resist. No, no. And we've got the hooks here or here. Which one are we going to go? Okay. That. <clears throat> so here's our, here's our hook. Um, so 
after you've done it. And if multiple people guess, then we'll draw a winner next Wednesday. I have a feeling most people are going to get it right. And uh, that is cool. We're going to start this one early. So anyway, all right. <clears throat> well, thank you so much for everyone that hopped on with us tonight. We're changing up the camera angles a little bit and we're making progress to give you all a better experience on YouTube. Thank you, Nathaniel, for throwing in a few flies for the giveaway next week. Um, we really appreciate it. Um, if you have any questions between now and next week, let us know. Send us a message on Instagram. Ask it in the comments of the YouTube video. Um, we'd appreciate your subscription and like. Is that what we were supposed to say? Please subscribe and like. Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, but it does mean a lot to us. So thank you so much, guys. I'll, I'll turn it over to Katie and let her uh, take it off. So see you guys later. Bye. Have a great weekend, guys. Don't forget to put your guesses to the mystery fly in the comments after the show's over for your chance to win a fly box with a bunch of flies in it. See you next time. Bye. Have a great night. <laughs>